Maraming salamat. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Please take your seats. Buenos días. My adlaw. Ogikan sa inahami ini lalawigan sa subo dawata ang akong kinasingkasing kaya yung masalamat ka ninyo ang atong mga iksuong Espanyol kaya lagi inyo yung dibalihin ang inyo pagsaulog sa inyo mismo nga vista, fiesta fiesta nasyonal de Espanya aunque esa fiesta sa celebra allí en Manila en este día celebramos aquí en Tebu la estrella de todo el país no. muchas gracias a while earlier my friend uh, the ambassador was here please send him my greetings his excellency Miguel Vitrai and the person who has given me the best birthday gift today. It is the best birthday gift because it is not for me. It is for Cebu and the Cebuanos, another game changer, which will boost even more the economic rising, the phenomenal growth of this island. But this will also give the necessary infrastructure. And we had just agreed in a matter of minutes which took you so long to you know, wait until you could sign because I had to corner him. He is known as a very professional, very efficient undersecretary of the Department of Tourism. He has, in fact, revolutionized the ways and procedures at the DOTR. He thinks out of the box as well, like me. Please help me welcome all Cebuanos. Please applaud as loud as you can. The Undersecretary of the Department of Tourism for Planning and Project Development, Undersecretary Timothy Batham. Just a secret for now between Yusek Batan, Mr. Ruben Kamba, the director of Acciona for Infrastructure, and myself. Secret. <laughs> Is the Undersecretary for Integrated Environmental Science of the BNR still here? There he is. Why are you so far away? <laughs> Undersecretary Carlos Primo Ortega. <laughs> and uh, Asak Mario Marasigan of the DOE. <laughs> we met by Zoom, right? I hope I left fond memories of myself in that meeting. <laughs> Well, I mentioned him earlier, and the reason why he transferred this whole event to Cebu, apparently, he's always stayed in Manila, but he's from Spain, but he's always stayed in Manila. But when he got to know Cebu, I hope that by now, you're slowly becoming a Cebuano by choice. Yeah. Senor Ruben Camba. You may be halfway there, but uh, I think for the next person that I will acknowledge, he's probably already about 99%. 99% on his way to becoming a Cebuano by choice and by heart. The Managing Director for Southeast Asia, for Acciona Energia, Senor Ignacio Domecq. I would like to greet our 
our mayors who took the time to be here on a Saturday at that. They always want to be on my good side. <laughs> so I'm a must, I should acknowledge them. We have the president of the League of Municipalities, uh, the provincial chapter, the, ma the mayor of Daan Bantayan, the sun rises in Daan Bantayan, Mayor San Shimura. And from the joyful city of Toledo, where our next solar plant will soon be located for Acciona Energia, we have with us the beautiful and joyful mayor, Joy Perales. that has produced three governors and the next venue for yet another solar plant by Acciona and Lujia. The dynamic and shall I say effective mayor of Dumango. There are 37 barangays in Dumango. And Kalu is a the all 37 barangay captains support him. In the last elections, my opponent got a zero in one or two of the barangays. Maybe even the watcher voted for me. That's because of his effective leadership. Mayor Gundur Hikan. Senor Fermin. Ayi, the prayer. Let us please uh, give him a big hand. Ah, he's already, he give money then you, by heart and by choice, but you have to transfer to Cebu. <laughs> May I greet Mr. Alan Aquan of CCLEX. We have a meeting coming up. And the fair increase. <laughs> Senor Aquan Regises, Consul, Spanish Consul. Consul Sam Chosan, the president of the Cebu Chamber. You gave a good speech according to Nacho yesterday. Jay Uvalios, the president of the Madawi Chamber, Mr. Mark Enoch. And the officers of both Cebu Chamber and the uh, Madawi Chamber. Our guests from Manila, thank you for flying over. Blame it on Ruben. But you are warmly, warmly welcomed by this island called Cebu, which is like no other. I really thank the camera for having chosen to celebrate the Dia de la Hispanidad here in Cebu, where by tradition, this has always been celebrated in Manila. You see, today is a very special day, the 12th of October. In 1492, Christopher Columbus discovered the new world. And since then, this day has been celebrated as a very special day for all Hispanic-speaking countries. It is in fact, as I had said, a celebrated National Day of Spain. But let me tell you a story. There was a young lawyer, newly married. He had to accompany an elderly client because she wanted to go on a world, well, a European tour. At that time, they had to take a combination of ships and planes, because that was many, many years ago. 
The client was not actually his. She was the client of his brother, who was also a lawyer. But at, when she wanted to take that trip, the brother could not make it. So this young lawyer, newly married, had to leave a pregnant wife and went on to accompany the elderly woman going to places like France, uh, or else. But they finally arrived in Spain. And they went to Saragossa. When they went inside the basilica, the lawyer found himself on his knees, thanking the Senora, Nuestra Senora del Pilar. We all know this basilica was founded on the story that when St. James the Apostle was sitting by the river, finding it so difficult to evangelize, the Virgin Mary then, still alive, had told him, just call me. Call me and I will be there. And indeed, he said, Oh, Maria, es muy difícil para mí. Yo no sé que yo puedo algo más. ¿Sabes cuánto? En un chat. Ay, Maria, y su cayo para nada. Bueno, ¿qué va? ¿Cómo se queda con vos And then, lo and behold, there by the river, he saw the image of the Virgin Mary holding the infant Jesus on top of a pillar of the many Marian apparitions. This apparition is unique in the fact that the Blessed Mother appeared when she was still alive. Here, she was still here on earth. And that is why you have the Basilica. And that day is celebrated because that day is the feast day of the Lady of the Pillar, Nuestra Señora del Pilar. It is celebrated in many countries even here, because the Spanish were with us for almost four centuries. In San Juanca, it is the fiesta. Their patron saint is Nuestra Señora del Milan. We have one church in Sibona that also carries the Virgin Mother as its patron. And that young lawyer, when he was still a child, would be brought by his mother. He was sickly. He would be brought to that church as she prayed to the lady of the pillar to give him good health. And so this was very significant for that young man. When they were, they were about to leave, he decided to buy a pendant of the lady of the pillar. And when he came home to Cebu, he gave it to his wife. And she wore it until the day that she gave birth. And she gave birth at exactly 12.55 noon on the 12th of October, 1955. She gave birth to this infant little girl, the first of a brood of eight. And because that was such, that was of such significance, they decided to name her among her names, Pilar. 48 
years later, that little girl would grow up and go on to become the first woman governor of the first formally recognized province by the Kingdom of Spain, the Empire of Spain, when on the 6th of August, 1596, King Philip II issued a royal edict appointing Miguel Lopez de Legazpi as gobernador y capitán general de Provincia de Perú. 69 days, 69 years later, that lady from the infant born on the 12th of October to this young couple, she now stands before you, still governor of Cebu, celebrating with you the feast of the lady of the pillar celebrating with la cámara la día el día de España de España ¿por qué? <laughs> Esto es yo Gwendolyn Pilar Fier García I don't believe in coincidences or accidents or by chance <laughs> events. I believe that there's an unseen hand that guides the affairs of men. And it is by no accident that we are here together today at exactly, well, it's about 25 minutes to go till 12.55. <laughs> this has been preordained because you have come traveling all the way from Manila and other parts of the zone for you to meet up with our very dynamic and enterprising businessmen, the chambers that are here, and for you to listen to this little girl. To try and convince you, even as I hope that our friends from Taisei, please stand up, Mr. Kawai Plawa, and partners and Paco, the engineering genius of uh, Axiama. Look at the top caliber assembly here. We don't need many. It's more quality than quantity. And we are here together. This is a synchronicity that can only mean more good for Cebu, that can only mean more opportunities for this little girl and the provincial government with the help of the private sector to uplift the lives of 5.5 million segments. And so, senoras y senoras, ladies and gentlemen, it is with pride that I present to you Cebu. He planted the seed of the Christian faith, which the Cebuanos embraced, 
making Cebu the cradle of Christianity in the Asia Pacific. But the natives went up in arms when their freedom was threatened. Magellan met his end at the Battle of Mactan in the hands of Lapunapu and his men. In 1565, the second wave of navigators, led by Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, arrived in Cebu and successfully claimed the archipelago, naming it after King Philip II of Spain. Cebu became the first capital of the Philippines when King Philip II appointed Legazpi as Gobernador y Capitan General, making him the first governor of the first political subdivision of the future nation. Owing it to its geographical location, Cebu is an ideal hub for commerce and industry, as it is easily accessible to the capital Manila in the north and Mindanao in the south, including its neighboring regions through direct international flights served by its award-winning Mactan Cebu International Airport and a transshipment point locally and internationally through its highly efficient international port terminals. The Cebuano workforce is young, educated, tech-savvy, skilled, and dedicated, propelling Cebu as the leader in the country's shipbuilding industry, as well as the preferred investment destination in property development, business process outsourcing, manufacturing, and export processing ventures. Dunstick. 35 years later, Cebu made history by entrusting the reins of the provincial government to the first woman governor, Gwendolyn Pila Fiel Garcia, known for her motto, Dili Sunti Ang Pabuhatun, Buhat Maui Pasuntihun, which is translated roughly as action, not words. She redefined Cebu for the world to mean more than just its urban core. Now on her 14th year as governor, she is Cebu's most beloved government official. She spearheads Cebu's ascent as the unquestioned leader among 82 provinces in the Philippines. It is today the richest province with assets spent at 309.8 million pesos. Cebu province continues to sustain its status as the number one tourist destination in Asia Pacific by continuing to build more infrastructure to upgrade the road networks not only for its constituents, but also for tourists, facilities such as hospitals, community centers, and most importantly, to sustain the Cebuano livelihood and manpower by implementing scholarship and skills development programs such as Subu Negosyo and Subu Kahanas. Here in Cebu, the provincial officials only implement programs and projects that can sustain themselves and grow without the government regularly pouring funds into them. An entrepreneur herself before running for public office with vast experience ranging from private port operations, real estate, construction, trading, security, and other services, Governor Garcia fully understands the pivotal role the private sector plays in development. She revolutionized local governance by running the provincial government like a business enterprise. Efficient, effective, professional, innovative, and creative. She has shown great skill and resolve in embarking on beneficial public-private partnerships at the level of the local government, prioritizing sustainable projects that can address the Cebuano's basic needs, while at the same time raising revenues for the provincial coffers. An example is the Cebu Province's multi-billion bulk water supply project that taps into the island's abundant surface water of rivers and waterfalls. Under the program, the provincial government constructs water treatment facilities and reservoirs and lays down distribution channels for every Cebuano household. The provincial government sells the bulk water to the local government units and the LGUs distribute the same to its constituents with price approved and regulated by the Cebu Provincial Water Resources Council. This achieves two things, ensuring that the constituents have level 3 water supply at a very low cost and at the same time, earning revenues for the LGUs to sustain the project. In energy, the provincial government has developed a very promising partnership with the multinational Spanish-owned company Acciona Energia Global and Makati-based Freya Renewables Incorporated for the construction 
of a 150-megawatt solar power plant in the northern town of Daan Batayan. The deal, which was signed in March this year between Governor Garcia and Ignacio Domecq, Acción Energía's Business Development Director of Southeast Asia, marked the first LGU-led PPP in the country in the field of solar power generation. Such a historic event was attended by national government officials, as well as Acciona's Director for Infrastructure in Southeast Asia, Ruben Camba, and Spanish Ambassador to the Philippines, Miguel Utrao. In May, Acciona doubled down on its commitment when its chairman and CEO, Jose Manuel Enricanales E. Dumec, visited Governor Gwen at the capital, accompanied by a host of company executives. But that meeting was not the last, as Governor Gwen returned the courtesy and visited Acciona's corporate headquarters in Madrid in September this year. Señor Domecq gave the governor a tour of their impressive facilities, who in turn expressed her appreciation by gifting the chairman a painting of the Cebu provincial capital. Acciona is now eyeing two more expansion solar farm sites in Toledo City and Dumanhoek Town. The solar power farms are expected to help bring in cheaper renewable energy at no cost to the province, while fully supporting Cebu's rapid economic developments. In Malapasco Island, the provincial government intervened and brought in generator sets, which will now be operated in cooperation with Cebu Electric Cooperative 2. After the island's power supplier failed to provide sufficient and reliable power to this top tourism destination, grossly violating the terms of its contract, the recurring power interruptions attributed to PSPI's outdated equipment and infrastructure have burdened both locals and tourists. With the provincial government as Malapascua's power supplier, rates have also become more consumer-friendly, which benefits households and tourism establishments all the more. Acciona's infrastructure arm, which built the Cebu Cordoba Lake Expressway, is also currently in talks with the provincial government for the construction of the Metro Cebu Expressway project, a 74-kilometer expressway that will connect the city of Naga in the south and the now city in the north through Cebu's scenic ridges. The project which was initially implemented by the Department of Public Works and Highways, has been delisted from the agency and turned its management over to the provincial government after huge cracks, defects, violations, and mounting environmental and safety concerns were discovered in the implementation. With the provincial government now handling the project, this will now become another PPP scheme. As capital assures, that interested partners shall receive full government support and a return of investments from tall fees of the expressway, which is seen to solve Metro Cebu's worsening traffic woes, affecting over 5.5 million population. On this significant day for Spain, October 12, it is also worth noting that while the first Spanish settlers led by Magellan came to colonize, but were defeated by the Cebuanos in the ill-fated Battle of Mactan. Today, our Spanish brothers and sisters stand as Cebu's partners in development. Over the years, despite a sour ending between Magellan and Lapu-Lapu, the Spanish influence in the Philippines is still very much alive and palpable, and it has enriched the Filipino way of life in more ways than one. This relationship has endured as Spanish culture remains an integral part of our Filipino identity. Today, it is further strengthened by this new collaboration as Cebu and Spain now work together to uplift the lives of their respective citizens. As a testament to that, the Spanish Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines, La Camara, has broken with tradition by choosing to celebrate El Dia de Hispanidad not in the capital Manila, but here in Cebu, the site of Spain's first meaningful contact with the people of this archipelago. Today is also El Dia de Nuestra Señora del Pilar, the nominal patron saint of Governor Gwendolyn Pilar Garcia, who happens to be celebrating her birthday today. It is also important to note that after almost 500 years, 
Since that bloody battle of Bagtag, a woman born on the day the Spanish people celebrate their significant holiday was also the first Cebu executive to have invited a Spanish group to collaborate on sustainable programs and projects such as these ongoing endeavors that are true game changers in our continued quest for progress. Clearly, the timing of this day is no mere coincidence and cannot be overlooked. The cultural and religious significance of this day cannot be dismissed as a mere chance, but a reminder of our shared history, traditions, and culture as a people, intertwined by faith. Welcome to Cebu, officials and esteemed members of Spanish Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines, La Cámara. We look forward to mutually beneficial and lasting partnerships between you and the province of Cebu the recognized number one province in the country today. Love Cebu, love the Philippines. Thank you very much, Honorable Governor Garcia. We would like to invite you again on stage, Madam Governor, for the awarding of a token of appreciation by the President of La Camara, Mr. Ruben Kamba. Let's give them a warm round of applause.
one thing that I would wish. This coming May, I'll be running again for my sixth term as governor of Cebu. I hope that the Cebuanos will find it fit and trust me enough to give me that sixth term. It won't be a 25-8. It will be a 48-16. Be warned. Because there is still so much that needs to be done. And my wish is that when I shall leave office at the end of my sixth term, we shall have together with the provincial government, with the private sector, with Sabuanos on board, we shall have put in the necessary infrastructure, the necessary development, necessary programs that will uplift the lives of Sabuanos, especially those that we help the most. The gratifying note would be when many years from now people will forget what I did or what I said. They will not forget how I made them feel. And if somebody would ever ask, who's Glenn Garcia? I hope someone will say, ah, you may not remember her but because of what she did, she made our lives better. Thank you very much, Governor, and once again, happy, happy birthday.